Welcome to another Let's Play video. This time we're looking at Hegemony, Philip of Macedon. This is a game produced by a small company, I paid on Steam and I picked it up at a bit of a bargain price. So I wasn't really expecting much from it, but it turns out to be a very, very good, very, very addictive game. So I'm actually thinking, why not make a Let's Play video out of it, since it's the sort of game that many users out there might like to see and probably won't look at because it isn't backed up by a major publishing house. Like, for instance, if you've got, like, um, the next Elder Scrolls game, for instance, there'd be tons and tons of hype about it. But this one, I've hardly seen nothing. But it's definitely a game worth having. Although I must say, it is a bit unstable. It crashes out occasionally. So you do have to save regularly. Now, as you can see, you get various help screens and uh, unit promotion screens and all that kind of stuff. You even get objectives, which award your bonuses. So you get all on top, you get all that on top of the um, real-time strategy element. Now, as you can see already, when you actually um, zoom in and out, it seamlessly blends, you know, the basic train which you're looking at now with an overview map of Greece. You can literally, I mean, I've edited it, so you'll see it jumping about a lot, but you can scroll all the way in and all the way out in very very much like the Supreme Commander Ruse type way of doing things, which I like. I, I do like that that standard that's coming in nowadays for maps and in real-time strategy games. I think it's a big improvement, and it's good to see a small developer using the same system. Although, I guess the system is really um, built so it'll work well on consoles as well as a PC, but that doesn't matter because... It, Developers tend to waste a lot when they develop for a PC, you know. They think, oh, we've got tons of this and tons of processing power, let's use it all. And as a result, you get really sluggish games, you know. Whereas with the consoles here, the games tend to be optimised and they perform better. And they're usually not so buggy even. Now, as you can see, the battle going on here around a fort, which I captured earlier and I've just lost again by the looks of it. No, I've still got it. Um, the enemy sends out units on a regular basis. Now you can see them paths where the carts move back and forth. They're the supply chains. And the supply chains move resources to the cities like food. That's what you buy your units with and supply units with and everything else. For instance, if a city runs out of food, any units in it will start to starve. And then they route and run away. Which means if you put a city under siege straight away while it's got loads of food, you're going to be really struggling but if you put a city under siege after starving it out the chances are the units will rout very quickly and you'll take the city easily so what you do is you take them farms around the towns first any farm linked to it you can see the farm because they look like they've got like grain and a little flag in the middle and a um, pen and as you can see they're all linked to places with roads the forts also can gather resources and stuff as well. In fact, you can use the forts as a as like a like a temporary stop, you know, transferring goods from one place to another. You can fortify the forts. You don't necessarily need to have troops though stationed in every city, which is a good thing because you don't get that many troops to defend your realm with. It's it's a question of points. For instance, if you look in the top the top um, right hand corner, you've got the um, money, which is like was it 1431 at the moment and then underneath that you've got your troop points underneath that you've got your leader points now the leaders you know you basically get the leaders by building villas around the map when you find them you find a ruined villa you rebuild it and that gives you a leader for that for that villa that leader could then be assigned to a unit which improves the unit a little bit and I found that some of the leaders are better than others, you know, they, they give the units bonuses. But some units, well some leaders aren't that good at all, so you wouldn't really want them in the front line or defending anything important. Now, your actual um, king, which is um, Philip of Macedon, he and his companions are amongst the hardest units in the game. And you can upgrade them as well as the normal units in the normal way. But straight away from the beginning, they can do quite a lot of damage. Now here, the enemy is trying to take back a town that I've already captured from it. And it's sending a fairly large force. Now you can see the siege has begun and the red bar there is slowly dropping. But my troops are going to arrive before he has a chance to finish the siege. And he charges towards me, then I send my men that are in the town out towards him. Now, I stationed men here not because I had to, but because it's one of the regular targets from this particular AA. So, I found it's better if I actually have a unit there to defend in case he attacks like he does. Some areas don't get attacked as often as others. 
but you also get trunk to landing by sea for instance as well so anywhere along the coast you could have um, a landing although I found that also again they tend to land in roughly similar places so you find you know stacking a unit in a fort or in a town in key areas so you can defend the whole area is probably the most economical way to play this game rather than having a big army anyway you just have one unit and maybe some cavalry you know within running distance somewhere else Cavalry is pretty important actually because they get around the map fairly quickly but they're not very good against certain types of units obviously so if you are going to charge cavalry at um, spearmen you can need an awful lot of cavalry anyway when the units do actually um, route they have little white flags above them or the broken symbol above them and when your men catches up to them and um, hits them again they have a white flag above them after that you can capture them and turn them into slaves this is what's going on here slaves can then be combined and sent to work in mines which you can also build and capture because there's various things around the map you can build for instance you can build watchtowers and stuff that gives you a warning of advancing troops and stuff like that so these um, slaves actually help you do that they can also carry food around with you while you're on campaign so if your troops moving away from a food source and they're going to start before they get to the destination having a few slaves carry troop while well, carry food helps you can also like um, capture sheep and have them to you know toddle along behind your army as well and feed you that way anyway as you can see on this the roads here you know the clinking of the towns and that lot are actually supply routes and you can assign them to any destination you want but if a unit an enemy unit crosses that or comes near it that route that supply route will stop depriving that town of any resources you might get that's how you starve a town out or prevent resources getting through mine supply gold which help you pay for mercenaries and other things as you can see my man's gone red so i'm actually running out of uh, resources here or gold here so means some of my mercenaries will be sitting down going on strike just as the battle starts there you go it's just corrected itself now I've actually managed to build up a fairly large army by building normal troops and, merc and buying mercenaries at the same time and catapults as well. I've sent some um, I sent some cavalry against the the city there. It's only got about 400 points worth of troops or defence points there, so they should be able to handle that. I mean, I can send my other men down the bottom to take care of this other town. Now you can remember the whole map is I'm surrounded by enemies on the on the map. So they attack me from different directions. While my army is over here, I might be, be attacked at the other side of the map, for instance. So this is why you've got to keep troops in certain areas, but you can't keep too many because you don't have enough to attack on any other opponent. And sometimes you've got to keep attacking the same town over and over again and keep depriving them of food to make the food slowly go down. So when you do attack with your main force, or when you're ready to capture the place, they've only got a little bit of food left. Because you can't always attack, you know, attack and capture everything in your first go. And sometimes you'll have to just we pull back a little bit and then um, build up some troops, you know, and just generally try and skimp, you know, troops elsewhere till you've got an army big enough and then go for it. Other times you'll find that, you know, you can just go straight for a town and capture it. But then you're attacked by a massive army from the opponent who's got lots of towns that are still healthy. And he counterattacks you and just wipes you out and takes the town back. So sometimes you've got to like whittle the um, enemy down across a broad front before you can move into your objective you're actually after. Like one of the towns I took on this is featured early on in the video. Actually had more troops in it than I had in my entire empire. So I, I literally had to go around capturing the um, farms before I could get anywhere near it. That, that strategy succeeded in the end. As you can see around here, this is a coastline. Boats can land anywhere along that coastline. Also, you've got these little temples scattered around. In fact, you can see me capturing a mine here. This provides gold for mercenaries and uh, and artil well, art well, what they call it, catapults and stuff. Anyhow, around the coast, you know, or even around the trees, you see these little temples sometimes. These give you bonuses to uh, fertility of the soil, which is food which helps with feeding armies and stuff as well you see one on the coast there next to that town now sometimes if you've got like um a wall around them you know, rebel really really quickly when you knock the wall down they settle down and don't rebel i don't know i think it's probably down to overcrowding 
So you knock down the wall and it relieves the overcrowding and they settle down and they don't rebel anymore. This town here, for instance, when I capture this one, it starts to rebel. Now, it wouldn't be so bad, but most of these southern ones are all like that. So you've got to keep troops in a rebellious town in order to stop them from rebelling. And because you don't get that many troops to start off with, that isn't really an option. So what I did in this particular area is I stationed a couple of units up the peninsula a little bit so it can cover the whole area, you know, if it's invaded by anything. That way, two units, you know, can defend everything. Now somebody said um, once, uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody said, <coughs> says, those who defend everything, defend nothing. In this game it's true, you defend specific locations by placing troops in key locations. That way, you know, that you cover large areas with a minimal amount of troops, that gives you a large army to conquer the rest of the map. Well you can see there I'm actually trying to capture that watchtower, but there's no path there so it won't let me. Now, now you see me conquering um, a town, I've got this under siege as you can see. It's going down fairly quickly because I've got a large force. His men are coming out to attack me. And um, I've got men there that I can't attack the field fault directly, which I used to use against his troops. Now I've captured it, I'm going to send my men in. Now this is what the game's about basically. You've got the whole of Greece to do this and the map is actually huge. And the AI is actually quite aggressive in attacking your back sometimes. But it's a very good game. For those people like strategy games, this is a rather interesting one because it's just one continuous map scroll here now, no loading screens or anything. It's very impressive, especially for a small developer. Anyway, that's it. Um, I just thought I'd show you this game since not many people seem to have even heard of it. Uh, I do recommend it and see you in the next video.